Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you here in the theater with us. Um, you're in for quite a treat tonight, and I would like to thank uh, the Jim Boyce Trust and Chris Otis for recognizing the uh, significance of this film and sponsoring it, and TV Moaned. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when I first learned about this film, I was quite keen on learning more about it. I think I read about it before it was finished. But um, when we started Docklands, we, start, we, we included a sort of a, a side strand uh, called Breaking Form, which we try to highlight the films that kind of go out of the traditional documentary format. And this film is one of them, and it, it, it's extremely um, an interesting film, and I think you'll enjoy it. And I'd like to ask the director, Martin Purcell, to come up and say hi. Yeah, thanks very much for coming. I can only uh, join you in, in, like, I'm so happy. This is so cool, no? Yeah. This is our, you, you, you say, premiere, first screening here on this side of the Atlantic. Um, yeah, um, I think maybe we talk afterwards. Yes. Just one thing, so... I think, no, we'll talk afterwards, but it's, it's great that there's festivals who recognize that, that you know, like, um, there isn't only documentary or fiction, there's just also, you know, like, you can mix it up and you guys recognize it, so I thank you very much for, for that. And thank it you for doing so it so well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing is the film ends, or the film has, has a quite a, we've had like three or four screenings and I've noticed that sometimes the audience is quite... Uh, gobsmacked. So if you are, I'm happy, of course, that's, that's part of what we were trying to do, but come out of it and let's have a conversation afterwards. Let's, let's not be quiet afterwards, let's talk, okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah, cool. we'll have encourage fun. that, yeah, yes. so see you after the film. <laughs> Cheers. So what do you think? <laughs> Pretty amazing, yeah. Um, we're we're just gonna let the credits roll with some music. We're gonna get started because credits, right? it's a lot of credits, <laughs> and we know that we we don't want to lose your interest. So I'd like to have. I'm Joni Cooper, the director of programming for Docklands. I forgot to tell you that earlier. But yeah, I'd like to bring uh, the director back up, Martin for sale. And Tekla Priebst, who is the graphic art director. <laughs> come on up, yeah. And we'll come over here. Yeah. Now, now, bring it up. Back up, back up. Ah. <laughs> there we go. All right. We want to get get you back into the mood of where we're where we're where we live already. Yeah. Where we want to stay. Nature needs half. Half would be good. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a good screening, eh? I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I got to see it on the big screen. That's what I was missing before, and I'm so glad I got to. See Tears were, were coming. Yeah. <laughs> and that soundtrack, Martin, incredible, incredible. That's what came back to me this time, just yeah. again, yeah. The cinema also sounds really good, eh? Yeah, yeah. yes, we're very lucky that way. Um, thank you for making this wonderful, incredibly thoughtful film in such a way that really hits hard, doesn't it? Like it just tells us exactly where we are and, and that we, we, need to, we need to start changing our ways. Yeah, it's and, uh, and, and hopefully, I mean, the, what, what we were trying to uh, do is to, to see our time also as the golden age, you know, like this is the time where we do have all that stuff that's still there. Yeah. And if you don't know what to do, uh, if you don't know where to find your, your motivation to maybe change your ways, 
just go out there because it's still there. Just go, go and look at it, and it's going to give you something. And and this opportunity might be lost to our to the children of our children. So exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> gosh, I, uh, I it, now I understand <laughs> I told why. You, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I understand why it's not always good when you're doing a Q and A to watch the film immediately. <laughs> before the Q&A because you know you have all these thoughts you've written down thought about them a lot and then it all comes rolling back but in a, in a, a bigger way a bigger way and it's just like well this this these questions are they they're not making sense anymore <laughs> but um I'm just so honored that we were able to bring the North American ha have the North American premiere and I just hope that we can help you get the word out and take it further because it, I mean, it's so clear that we can do something about extinction and climate change. It's so clear. It's just that we have to accept that. Yeah. It's like the guy Daniel Pauly says, no, if you beat someone on the head, what you can do for that person is stop beating them on the head. <laughs> no, it's like, it is, it's, yeah. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I think the, what we were trying to do really is, is um, not to depress people. And I, think, and I realize we've half failed a little bit. The, the film turned out quite dark. Um, but that's because of uh, when I started, when I sat down to write it, which is eight years ago, a long time ago, before the big California fires, before, the, before a lot of things that we now take as normal. Yeah. Um, uh, I sat down to, to do something that really shows, like that makes us marvel and that reminds us of, of the beauty and, and on the, the magic of nature. And I think a lot of that is kind of still there. But it turned out that throughout this period of, of also understanding the, the numbers, f the project changed from, from being like a vehicle for like a fun thing that I care a lot for to a political thing. Like it's, we, we, we are in, in Europe, we've already sort of secured out the way we're coming out and in Germany it's coming out in next uh, next month and we're coming out in col in collaboration with the extinction rebellion and with like in a sort of kind of a, um, activist kind of way it's not just a not just a movie it's also an, an activist thing there and um, that's something that came later that's something that came through the through really the research mm -hmm. into what's going on and how urgent the time is yeah so you that was one question I wanted to ask is that when you were making the film, did you see the whole activation and activism part of it coming out with the film? Mm, no. No. Not, not, not in the beginning, because yeah. eight years ago there was no Extinction Rebellion. Right. right. right? And there was, right. No, there was right. no Fridays for Future, no right. Greta, no all that stuff. That's, all of that stuff is super recent. Yeah. And um, no, it really started as a, as a more like an aesthetic uh, endeavor. And now I think um, it's both, and it's it's also weird. Like I like I, I get also criticism for how it's kind of it has a um, it doesn't go very deep. It stays on a sort of punch you in the face kind of level, but it doesn't go into let's say it doesn't follow one species' story of how it gets it's getting extinct. It just stays. It mixes species up. It mixes places up. It mixes marine and and land animals up. It, like it really is a big. Big old stew of, of, of things, yeah. and then and sometimes I think like if if someone um, is looking for a scientific uh, for a scientific documentary, they're probably in the wrong place when they come into here because this is first it's not a documentary really, and second mm -hmm. it's um, it goes to the emotions more than it does to the to the information or the document part. Yeah, of, yeah because I did feel that pot that you're mixing that was I think more effective putting all that together rather than, you know, dissecting and taking apart. It just, you're just sort of overwhelmed by, by all of that going on that you know, that we know is going on around us. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, I got just kind of swept up in it, yeah. Also, one thing that came in the process of writing it and preparing it is the sort of third act. You know, the film kind of talks about species and extinction and then they try to make the movie and it doesn't work. And then comes another almost half an hour of, of sort of investigation into what this species, us, what makes us us and, you know, like the, that, that whole part. And um, again, that's something that came um, 
once we realize we can't just talk about uh, extinction on its own because yeah. because we are also we're, it's a natural behavior like and you can't you can't blame people you know there's people who say you know all these things that are happening climate change and all the things that we are causing um, we cannot be blamed for it because it's our natural behavior we are like this and then there's people who say human species is like a virus and we're not going to stop multiplying and behaving like a virus until the host is dead and all the and then and, and then so you, you shouldn't judge it um, and I think. That's something that I, that I came to care for towards the end more than more than almost the others. Like the, the the idea is that can we really, like, basically, are we are we are we capable of change? And if so, like yeah. because like like one of the women in, in the in the film says that she you know, like she says it's not art that makes us us. It's not war. It's not the use of tools. It's the fact that we go to a place, change something, and when we leave, that that place will have changed. That's no, no species does that. That's us doing that. And then, so she says, "Can we do that inside of ourselves?" And I think that's a question that's that's really interesting. And that's what we're trying to do with the film. That like maybe you go out and go, "I will make that change tomorrow because I think I can. I think I'm a human yeah. being in that way that I can change yeah. things around me and inside of me as yeah. well." Yeah, yeah, and that gives. I th I think the film gives gi gives hopefully gives us impetus to do that and take it forward. Thekla, I wanted to ask you um, what your most, like your favorite challenges in this, in terms of what y your work as the uh, doing, uh, speak to what you did, because you told me what you did in the film, but. Uh. Yeah, thanks for that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, once was the matter of time. And we had to, to um, deal with a lot of information. And um, I really like the fact. So I, my, my task was um, taking care for the details. Yeah. So you can press on pause in this movie and checking out the facts and the news and the, the tiny things in the background. And you can just stop it and read things. So um, this was quite challenging because um, it has to be the right things and it has to be true and I was responsible for all the t infographics and so I, I, I was really taking care, even if it's just for a second scene, that everything is, is right, you know, yeah. and I think that was most challenging because, yeah, we had to deal with a lot of information and uh, time pressure as well. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and the... Uh, the way you had the year show up so clearly on most things, that, that was, I think, a really nice touch because it, it was very clear where, like, from the beginning to the end and, and in the end credits where it went. Yeah, yeah. I felt today that, and not for the first time, that because you know how the film starts with a sort of doomsday scenario of all the things that could go wrong. Imagine we found a bunch of oil in the Arctic tomorrow, what would happen? And, you know, like this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then these are obviously made up. And then throughout the film, in the same aesthetic, there are articles that are all real. Like all the, all the articles from, inside, from the middle part of the film are real statistics and real stuff, really from the same sources that it says on the, on the yeah. screen as well. And then the film ends again with made up ones. So I, to the day, I'm not sure if, does that work for you guys? Like that, do you, do you yeah. get what's what? And did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, yeah. So I heard you talk this morning, and first of all, I think it was beautifully done. Um, it, Thank you. The, the graphics were amazing, and um, I, I, I feel like you, you put the truth inside of a fictionalized um, truth. You used a sci-fi and fantasy inside of all the truth, the truth that you wove throughout that we all know because we're living this right now. And um, I, I just thought, you know, to me it was impactful. Um, I wasn't left with a feeling of doom and gloom. Um, I'm a believer that we can reverse climate change and we can actually make a difference and I live in that world. You know? yeah. so, um, I really enjoyed it and it was beautifully done. She, she really enjoyed the film. I just will repeat a little bit of what you said so that everybody can hear it. And that it was f fictionally impactful. Fictionalized truth. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The truth is there. Yeah, 
and very impactful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just uh, in reply to that, uh, something that uh, we saw your hand here next. <laughs> um, uh, something that that we cared for in the writing and in the making of the film is really that because I mean because we're taking the artistic license to play around with with genres and with, with t genres that are specifically fictional like time travel stuff. Um, but at the same time, we really wanted to make a film that that um, highlights the idea of science and peer-reviewed scientific facts. And obviously that's also because we wrote and produced it during the Trump era and during the whole, you know, like, which is still going on. The, 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 the alternative truth idea is still out there and causing really big problems. So uh, we tried to do both at the same time, like play with it, but also like for the attentive viewer, really say like, look at the sources, find out what it is that you're reading. And there's a line in the, very, quite in the beginning of the film which you said like, check, have to check the sources and all this stuff. And, um, yeah, it's something that we found also in the research that there is a lot of figures out there. For example, you no, know, like there's there's lobby groups who want the extinction figures to be low, and then there's others who exaggerate them. So you have to go to the peer-reviewed scientific sources, and there's no harm in going to the big places like BBC. I mean, that's you can think, you can also criticize all the big news outlets, of course, but normally they have a peer-reviewed thing going on, which is worth more than just going to Facebook and reading the figures there, and. Um, yeah. And, and, and it was interesting, too, that it's true. We don't hear about every... T like, if they actually told us what was going extinct today, we ne they never tell us that. You know, we get a figure every few years or something. Yeah. But it's crazy. Yeah. Yes? Uh, um, I really enjoyed your film. It makes me think strategically how you can use it um, to, get, to get the word out and to, and to create activism. Um, I would recommend taking it and, and seeing how you can get it through the university system. Right. And then adding on what you did, um, having links, you know, I'm not sure, I have ideas, but having links to different, if you want to go deeper, um, I can see it, um, you know, going to the university in, in the Western world, because I feel like the Western world right now is causing a lot of havoc. There's a lot of... Um, uh, associations, nonprofits that you can go to that work with the universities. I mean, there's just a, a myriad of things because it's great and you show it to people and you feel something, but you have a lot of activists and who have time and who can really make a difference for now and in the future. Did she everybody see, hear that kind yeah. of? Yeah, right? The, I, I have connections if you, if you're interested at all. Well, absolutely, let's talk later. And, and uh, also, in, in response to that, um, it's there is a problem with the fact that movies cost money, and that means people have to like go there and spend it, and then they don't want to be illegal about activism. And so, uh, as a case uh, example, we just on the last screening that we had in Berlin uh, during a festival, uh, the Extinction Rebellion came, and they and they really they really came, and they they stood up and they talked and said, "Here we are, we love the film, and we want to collaborate, and we want to show it." And then after the show, we discussed how can we do it, and they said like, well, we, we want to cause a stink. We want to do it somewhere in the middle of the road, and we want to like maybe block a road and then show it to 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 the people who need to see it because all the people here probably are not the exact target audience for us because we want the people who don't go to a festival to see an environmental movie, right? So I get it and I agree, but then of course, then when I went to my producer and said like, hey, so the Extinction Rebellion guys, I have a great idea here. Um, how about we do that? And they're like, no, no, we would, no, 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 because it's illegal and all. So um, the I think what what would be really great for me is is if if you have ideas of how we can bring it out into the activism world without putting my producers in trouble, which I think there must be ways, and I think there must be audiences who who would enjoy it or who would be surprised by it. I think, I mean, we're, we're going to find out. We're going to put some work into it now. We're just coming out now. But if, if anyone in, in, the, in the audience has an idea or has, has a way of distributing it here, also in the States, we don't have a distributor yet, so if, if, if you're one, talk to us. <laughs> um, we'll see. But I think there's, there's a whole, there's things, gonna, things are going to start happening, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. Remember pre-COVID when, when there was Fridays for Future and, and all that stuff really strong and all the big demonstrations? I hope that's going to come back. Is that going to come back? Yes. Yes. Oh, right. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Dale. Um, so I want to make one quick observation and ask you a question. What I thought was brilliant about this 
was that you, there's a standard model for ecological films, which is usually bad, 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 hope, hope, hope. And it just goes that, that's like, it's like a cliche. And you broke that. You broke it in a brilliant way. And so I, my question is, did you, have you observed that or do you see any validity in what I'm saying about the standard and the fact that you broke it? Did you intend to do that? Did it, can everybody hear that? Yeah. I, I certainly didn't intend to antagonize the purists of documentary filmmaking because I, I, I see the point. I, I see the point of a film that's a document and that kind of claims the truth for itself and claims that it doesn't influence it artistically, which I disagree with, but I get it like that people care for, for documentary to be like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, thanks for the compliment, and, and I also think that uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say because I would I, I would uh, pat myself on the back. I, I think it's it, it's good to mix things up. That for sure. <laughs> yes, the woman. Uh, thank you very much. I think this was brilliant. That I've you. heard you a few times now sell yourself and the film short a little bit, and so I I would like to speak to that as a scientist. Right. So you, you said er, early on in this discussion that if you want the science, you know, this isn't the place to come. You said something mm -hmm. like that. And um, I do think that this is a documentary as well. Mm -hmm. Both. I, th yeah, I think and so too. I, I think you shouldn't sell that short. But again, speaking as a scientist, the way you incorporated the talking heads and the scientists in this was incredibly strong. And it's, it's incredibly informative. And please don't sell it short or sell yourself short. It's truly brilliant, and thank you. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Also, um, in reply to, to a scientist, uh, what I found is how um, the scientists, who are obviously brilliant at, uh, at knowing all the, all the sort of facts, and the, you know, um, how up they were for playing with it, and how up they were for no, because I had to ask them, so we're going to talk. I want you to, to, to tell us on camera all the things that you think are important to tell, but you have to use past tense and you have to say, well, you know, 30 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And they were so up for it, all of them. It, I think actually we got all this, because you might have recognized some faces, this quite a, quite a sort of A-league of, uh, of extinction biologists. Um, and I think it was part of the reason why we got them fairly easily was that, because they wanted to, to play that game. And they said, like, okay, this, this seems to be like a media product that might actually go anywhere because it's not standard. So it was, it was a blast to work with them. Actually, we shot here, the, one of the guys was going to come here tonight, Rodolfo Dirzu. He teaches in Stanford. And there's another two people from California here as well in the film. And yeah, it was, it was so much fun. And they all said the same thing. They said, like, we don't know how to bring our stuff to the masses and we're happy about a project like this so I, that's kind of how also I see our, our role uh, you know like that yeah. communication yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. our job yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, first back there and then. Um, I just want to say that a message from the future is an incredibly powerful premise to set up your film it has a lot of authority um, I was thinking about that today it's Mother's Day it's my went to a brunch with my 25-year-old son, and in a way, I'm a message from his future, uh, trying to get him to go see the dentist. <laughs> and I think that you have to figure out how to say it, and I, I think you did it really well, that it didn't feel harsh and judgmental and gloom, and, but it had a lot of power in it, how you set it up as a message from the future. Yeah. Well, again, thank you very much. I think the I think um, there's this great English word hindsight, no? That you have. That's how you I get it sometimes, and only with hindsight sometimes do you get stuff. And I think that's what we were trying to make work for this. And that it's so hard to see your your present sometimes. Yeah. Yes. I have a, a disappointment and. and a Finally, God damn it. <laughs> Then I didn't take the plastic sheet off, so you can actually read it. My God, yeah. <laughs>
So I would love to have seen or seen, maybe I missed it, as the credits are coming on or just before, just after, here's a single website that's easy to remember that I can go home tonight. I'm going to go home tonight and I'm going to be thinking, oh my God, what can I do? There's six million things that mm -hmm. I could do and I'll probably do none of them. Um, something, you know, an easy sort of breakdown that says, you want to send money, here are 12 ways you can right. do it. If you want to, you know, write letters, here are 19 things you can do. It's some kind of, make it easier mm -hmm. for us to channel some of the energy that, that developed as we watched your film. Right, yeah. Did everybody hear that? I think that's a, that's a really important one, yeah. And we had a discussion about this this morning that, that the festival invited to talk about things like that and about uh, you know like movies as activation and movies as, as like something like you said that where you watch it and in the end you get you're being kind of led to, to, to getting active. I think so far we've um, well we, we're working on it but we've we've concentrated so much on making the movie that we have we've kind of failed to set that up so far. Happy that the Extinction Rebellion is is friendly with us now and I wouldn't be surprised that if it comes out in the states doesn't have to be that version, right? We can still put stuff in the end, and um, I agree. It would have been good, we failed at it so far. Um, but, having said that, I also think um, there's people who do this professionally, and that's not, that's not us, like, certainly not me, because I've, I'm really, like, I have a big team, and there's producers and the distributors and all these people, and I'm just the artist, I just, I just wrote it and, and directed it, and I, I, I I think you're right, um, but I also think I prefer if we find the people to collaborate with instead of setting up a, a website and saying, here, give us your money and then we're gonna, gonna give it to WWF or something. WWF are also interested to collaborate now with us. It's still young, it's still early days. I mean, this is the, the premiere. And I hope uh, next time you see it, there's gonna be websites at the end. Well, we've just got time for one more question. The film also is just visual stunning. Um, remarkable shots of both the uh, documentary footage of animals plus what you created. And I was curious, I found the, the, the replacement of green with red yeah. in the landscape particularly beautiful and jarring. And I, I was wondering what was your thinking as you were creating this film to, to turn the landscape into red? Right, yeah. So the question of uh, why, is the, why is the landscape so red? Um, it's shot with a technology. Uh, this is a couple of young kids from California again, who've developed a filter that takes the, uh, the the technology of infrared photography to the next level. Some of you might know that you can do infrared photography in black and white, and then green will come out white. And this is in turn um, developed, uh, I think, during the Vietnam War, that they they developed a technology to to be able to see through the trees and distinguish a green tarp from a green tree. And in infrared, that's what happens. The tree will be white and then the tarp will be not white and then you see where it's a vehicle. Then this the technology was also used in, in a moving image by some people. I don't want to go on a tangent here. <laughs> but there's, you know, the Soy Cuba, this film? If anybody knows it, that's also shot on infrared. It's black and white. And then these Californian kids uh, came up with a filter that does that, but it, you can keep the color. And they actually made filters for us. We're the first feature film that did it. So it's shot in infrared, and the, the green, the chlorophyll of the green turns red. So, and then, I mean, I think that in terms of why we did that, I, I hope it's obvious, because like everything that's alive is red in the film, and we thought that was kind of cool. And is there a connection yeah. to your hat with that? <laughs> Can't go without the hat question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to give you an opportunity if you've got anything you'd like to close with before we say well, goodnight. Well, really, like, uh, I would like to close with thanking you guys for, for having us, really, like, to, for making this possible, for believing that, for, for being so open to films that are not strictly documentaries. Uh, and to you guys obviously for coming. So yeah, yeah it's a big, big, big thank yeah. you all around. And <laughs> and also like if anybody has an idea of uh, distribution for us, we're still looking for it. So please come talk to me later and maybe you know, something yeah. can happen. Yeah, and I did want to thank all of you for coming and appreciating this film because you know, it's Spectacular. Thank you for making it. And thank, thank you. you for letting us host thank you. it. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Oh, no, one more thing. So earlier, we realized this is the kind of end of the festival, in a way. 
And then so where and then I said like where are we gonna go eat and drink now? And then we <laughs> were thinking about it. And then we went to the other side of the road to the falafel place and said, It's over the festival's over. How about you put a big table out there and we go eat and drink at your place? And they said yes. So yeah. if anybody's hungry now, we're gonna be at the falafel place and talk to each other. So. Exactly. And that was because we couldn't find anywhere that was gonna be open. <laughs> and they agreed. So yeah. So yeah. see you at the falafel place. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey.